Hello and welcome to the Micro Learning Institute. In this tutorial we look at IAS 12 Income Taxes. IAS 12 addresses the accounting issues related to the tax effects of current period transactions and events, unused tax losses or credits, and finally the tax consequences when the carrying amounts and tax amounts differ. Firstly, let's look at what IAS 12 says about current tax. IAS 12 defines taxable profit as the net amount in accordance with taxation authorities rules for determining income tax. Equivalently, income tax is defined as the taxable profit multiplied by the tax rate. The current tax is defined as the amount of income taxes payable or recoverable on the taxable profit or loss for the period. We measure the current tax using tax law enacted or substantively enacted at the reporting date. We present current tax usually in the profit and loss or if it relates to an item of other comprehensive income that tax is also presented as part of other comprehensive income. We present a current tax liability for any tax payable on current or prior taxable profit. We represent a current tax asset if an overpayment is recoverable in future periods. Now let's consider what IAS 12 says about deferred tax. IAS 12 defines the carrying amount as the measurement under IFRS in the financial statements. In contrast, IFRS, IAS 12 defines the tax base as the measurement under tax law in the tax accounts. A temporary difference refers to the difference between the carrying amount of an item in the statement of financial position in the financial statements and that item's tax base on the tax statements. A taxable temporary difference occurs when taxable income is increased in future when the asset is recovered or the liability is settled. In contrast, a deductible temporary difference occurs when taxable income is decreased in future periods when the asset is recovered or the liability is settled. A deferred tax asset or liability is recognised for all temporary differences. A deferred tax asset is recognised as a result from deductible temporary differences and unused tax losses or credits. The recognition of a deferred tax asset relies on having taxable income in the future in order to benefit from the deferred tax asset. And we recognize a deferred tax asset only if it is probable that taxable profit will be available in future periods. We recognize deferred taxes in profit and loss unless the related income or expense is recognized elsewhere such as other comprehensive income or directly in other equity or the tax results from a business combination. IAS 12 states that deferred tax is measured on an undiscounted basis. We use the tax rates for the period when the asset is expected to be recovered or the liability is expected to be settled. We use rates that are based on laws enacted or substantively enacted at the Statement of Financial Position date. And we review the carrying amount of the deferred tax asset at each reporting date. Deferred tax assets or liabilities are adjusted when a new tax rate is substantively enacted. And this adjustment is accounted for as a revision to an accounting estimate under IAS 8. The tax expense in profit and loss includes both current and deferred taxes. 
and we report the tax expense on profit or loss separately from tax expense in other comprehensive income. On the statement of financial position, all deferred tax assets and liabilities are presented as non-current. And we do not offset current tax assets and liabilities or deferred tax assets and liabilities unless the entity has the legal right to offset them and the entity intends to either settle, net or simultaneously. Thank you very much for watching this presentation from the Microlearning Institute on IAS 12 Income Taxes.